Hey there, my name is Kiri and I'm a flower farmer here in Western Washington in Zone 8A. I just finished up my first year growing and selling cut flowers as a business and I tested a bunch of different flowers this year. I'm really glad that I did do that because I feel like I figured out what works for me, things that I'm not going to waste my time with anymore, and things that I still have my eye on about maybe I'm going to cut down again next year. In today's video I'm going to explain my five flowers that I'm not growing next year. And the common theme along all five of those flowers is that they just really didn't give me enough bang for my buck. So we'll go into the details there. I'm also going to talk about two flowers that are kind of borderline on my cut list for next year. We're going to give it another try and we'll see how it goes. Those may be kicked to the curb here very shortly. <laughs> the first one on my list that I am not growing next year is Cynoglossum or Chinese Forget-Me-Not. So that is... A filler type flower can also kind of be an airy accent and it is a cool flower for a lot of different growing zones so it blooms pretty early in the season and actually just a smidge too early so I did not fall sow any cool flowers last year so this was like a winter sowing succession that I did and it awkwardly bloomed earlier than all the other winter sown cool flowers so I didn't really have anything to pair with it and then the vase life was quite a bit shorter than most other flowers that I'm growing. And the other thing that was kind of a pain about it is that the harvest window was very short. So as soon as it started getting flowers on it, it started making seed and then can really use it. The other thing too is that if you're going to use it as a filler, it's just not really that bulky. So it takes quite a few stems to really have an impact in a bouquet. It's not really a cut and come again flower. If you can give up that blue or pink color, I would suggest replacing that with Feverfew. It blooms at just about the same time. It's much bulkier so one stem is going to take up a lot more in a bouquet. Way more productive. Like incredibly productive. And the harvest window is a lot longer. The vase life is better. All around, substitute Feverfew for Tiny Blossom, unless you need that blue or pink color. The other benefit is that Feverfew dries amazingly. So if you are trying to do dried flower wreaths and things like that, Feverfew is going to have your back when Tiny Blossom doesn't. Something else to consider. Unfortunately, Tiny Blossom has self-seeded all over where it was planted, so uh, I'm probably going to have it again next year even though I didn't grow it. <laughs> The second flower that I am not growing next year is calendula. So calendula is useful theoretically because it blooms quite a bit earlier than a lot of other flowers and it can act as a focal, but it's it's not right for me. The color, I, I grew orange flash this year and that hot color just doesn't work for the colors that I have going on at that time. I usually have a lot of purples and pinks and it was difficult to work that orange into my bouquets and a lot of people I don't think were very attracted to it. It also has very sticky stems which is a big pain to harvest. You know even if you're wearing gloves it gets your gloves all kind of nasty and the stems weren't the longest for me. They did get longer as the plant continued to you know bloom and put out longer stems over time. If you really really need a disc flower early on in the growing season that's a good choice but for me, I would rather just not have any flowers to sell than try to sell those because I just didn't love them. Base life also wasn't that great for me. So, you know, if you're going to do value added products, I think Calendula is really awesome for that. But otherwise, skip it in your mixed bouquets. The third flower that I am not growing this next year is Annual Baby's Breath. So, Annual Baby's Breath is a lot different than the florist Baby's Breath that you're probably used to seeing in grocery store bouquets, you know, or traditionally used by florists. That Baby's Breath is a perennial type of Baby's Breath, which I think is pretty invasive, actually. So, even though Baby's Breath is a hardy annual, I had a hard time getting it to do anything. Once it finally bloomed in about July, I couldn't use it because the stems were so short and they were really brittle. So that's the downside is that anytime I tried to put it in a bouquet they would just crumple up basically like little pieces would come off and it was just really not useful. And the other thing about the stems is they weren't straight so they do branch off quite a bit but the way that the stems were growing they were just like a tree branch honestly and it was very difficult to work with. So you can get a whole bunch of seed for really cheap and you can just throw it outside so I mean if you really 
want to just fill up some space, give it a try, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend it. Number four on the list is Sweet Peas. So I know everybody is obsessed with the fragrance of Sweet Peas and the romantic look of Sweet Peas. And I think they can be really useful in wedding bouquets or in you cut situations. A lot of people do that as well. But for me, I just didn't love it. There's a couple reasons why. First, I don't love selling toxic things to people. Sweet peas are very toxic to pets and people, and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable selling those to people. The second reason is that they have a extremely short face life, and I am trying to get away from short face life plants into more long-lasting plants, because uh, that's kind of my focus for this next year. Sweet peas don't fit the bill. The other thing is that they take forever to harvest. So if you want people spending a lot of time in your U-cut field picking those, perfect. Uh, but if you're trying to bang out some bouquets and cut those really quickly, good luck with that. <laughs> it took me the same amount of time to harvest five five dollar sweet pea bunches that it took me to harvest and arrange four twenty dollar bouquets. So that is not a good way to spend my time. So um, I'm nixing those for this next year because I would rather spend my time making full-size bouquets. And this might just be me, but this year they had a horrible aphid infestation and it came along pretty quickly after they started blooming. So a lot of those flowers weren't usable because I had so many aphids on them constantly. And even though I thought I got them all off, there'd be some secret ones hiding in there. And that's, that's just not fun. So it was good as like a trap crop. So the aphids pretty much left alone all my other flowers and just went straight to the sweet peas. I'm also trying to kind of get away from doing any jar arrangements and just doing mostly wrapped bouquets. So, you know, sweet peas kind of look best, in my opinion, in a jar arrangement. So that's another reason they're just not really on brand for me. Last but not least is heliotrope. So I bought heliotrope as uh, starts from the nursery because I was really worried about early season blooms. I will say that heliotrope did bloom very early because it was already a, an established plant. So it bloomed along with my alliums in June and then I also had it available for that uh, last minute wedding bouquet that I made. That color was really useful and I did really like that filler that I didn't have at that time. But otherwise, Heliotrope is a little bit a uh, high maintenance harvester. It needs the boiling water treatment, so as soon as you harvest it, you need to get it in some boiling water. And, you know, that's just a little bit too much work for me <laughs> when I'm worried about all the other flowers that I need to harvest. It didn't seem to love my growing conditions. I think maybe it needs hotter conditions because it didn't really produce too many stems and the stems that it did produce were very short. Also I think I'm a little bit sensitive to smells of plants. So Sweet Annie is one that's really stinky to me and Heliotrope was also a little bit stinky and I just ugh, don't enjoy that. <laughs> so I would suggest a fall sown yarrow to replace Heliotrope. It has similar structure. The color is not going to be the same but I could, I could give that up for uh, something a little bit more reliable, a little bit more cut and come again, and way cheaper of an investment. I'm not even sure that you can get heliotrope as seeds. I think only plants, but... So I'm definitely not growing those five plants this coming year, and I've got two that are on my radar. I'm growing them again, giving them another shot, but we're being really critical of their performance this next year. So the first category of flowers is those heat-loving tender annuals. So in my growing zone, I am very coastal. So I am zone 8, but I don't get very hot. I don't actually get very cold either. I'm pretty much very mild all the time. And that means that our summers are not super hot. Heat-loving flowers like Celosia and Amaranth and Gonfrina kind of have struggled for me. So I've grown Celosia two years in a row. One time just for fun and this year for, for cutting. And both years, it doesn't get very tall for me. So I'm going to try it again. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to grow it over in the new beds where it's very hot. So hopefully that will improve the performance this next year. But if it doesn't, I think I might have to nix it and replace it with something else. I would say this is probably the longest stem of Celosia that I harvested this year which is funny because it's the one stem that I found that I didn't use in things. <laughs> in fresh bouquets, 
this is not really the best, but obviously for uh, dried flowers, this is still very useful. All hope is not lost with those warm season flowers that are good for drying, but I'm watching them. The other flower that's it's on my watch list is tulips, so hear me out. Tulips are great because you plant them out in fall and they just hang out outside. They don't need a lot of babying from you and then they're ready to go pretty reliably in spring. The other thing that's great about tulips is that people recognize them. I got so much feedback when I started my business, you know, oh my gosh, you have tulips. They're so beautiful. They are my favorite flower. So that's really great, you know, when your customers recognize the flowers that you're growing and love them. And then of course, you know, it's the shoulder season products. So that's really great because you're going to have flowers available. Uh, when a lot of other people might not. There's some drawbacks to tulips that really should be addressed. So first and foremost, I intentionally pick early, mid, and late blooming tulips. And then on top of that, I have a cool weather through most of spring. So I get a, a decent harvest window on my tulips. And even so, it's still a pretty short window for me. You have to be very on top of checking your tulips every day sometimes multiple times a day depending on how warm it is to make sure that you're harvesting them at just the right time the color crack stage to get the best vase life for your customers if you're missing that even just by a couple hours that significantly reduces the vase life on your tulips also reduces the amount of time that you can hold them in a cooler which is the second issue with tulips is that you really probably should have somewhere to hold them over in a cold storage situation until you get them in the hands of your customer. I don't have a cooler. My tulips go in my refrigerator where I keep my food. And that's not awesome. I don't love that. So all of that considered, right, it, it's all the things that you need to do to try to get your money back on a 50 cent bulb. So I'm looking at that situation and then I'm kind of looking over here at, at ranunculus. And I'm thinking, hmm, Ranunculus can be planted out in fall as well. They are going to need some babying over winter, at least in my zone, right? This is all just my zone. You're going to have to babysit them over winter, you know, cover them up, uncover them, make sure the snow doesn't crush them, all that stuff. But once spring comes around, you're going to get six weeks of blooms out of those. And for one corm, that I think, double check the numbers, I think it costs about 80 cents versus a 50 cent tulip bulb, you're going to get maybe 10 stems versus one stem and then you're also going to be able to charge a higher price per stem versus the tulip stem so in my opinion it's kind of looking like ranunculus are a little bit of a better return on investment. The other benefit to ranunculus is they have a longer bloom time and they have a longer vase life so you don't have to be as on top of harvesting them at the perfect time. You can sell one stem of ranunculus and get your money back on your corm. And then you've got nine other ones that are just pure profit versus a tulip that gives you your return on investment on the one stem that it produces if you can sell that one stem. And spring is going to be really busy for me with my full-time job. My new job basically has a bunch of overtime from January through April. <laughs> it's going to be really busy and I'm trying to be realistic with myself. Am I going to be able to go out every day and harvest tulips when the sun is out? Because, you know, it's, we still got short days during that time. Ranunculus might look like it's going to overtake the tulips. I'll still grow tulips probably no matter what. But, you know, those are some things I'm looking at. And this next year I bought a few more tulip bulbs than I did last year. But I didn't increase my bulb order very much um, because I'm kind of considering these factors. So we're going to watch again this next spring to see how profitable tulips end up being for me. I did make a profit on them last year, um, but it was kind of a narrow profit. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below what flowers are on your do not grow list for next year. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.